Smash like. I found nothing in the theatrical release that suggested he was, except there is one line and one line only. Rachel says to him in his apartment, have you ever taken this test yourself? He doesn't answer the question and things move on. And she goes to the piano and begins playing. Uh, he's asleep. He wakes up uh, and he just joins her at the piano and says, I dreamt music. I looked for some meaning there. You know, is it embedded memory just like Rachel has? I, I couldn't find anything there, there. So I, in, in this cut, there's, he's not. No, you, it's funny. You're right. I, I agree with you totally. As far as that scene, your instinct is, is impeccable though, because there is another scene at the piano where Deckard is in, alone in his apartment and he's got all the pictures that are of the replicants like history or back or Rachel's background or whoever, but he has all these pictures on the music stand and he's kind of like playing a single note over and over. And there's that lovely, you know, we'll get into Van Gallus, but there's that lovely Van Gallus soundtrack. that's over top of it and kind of like coincides with him, like striking the key, which is really nice touch. But um, in the version we saw the 1982 theatrical release, there's just him doing that. And then he gets up, takes his scotch, goes over to like feed one of those into his little machine that, you know, enhance mm -hmm. 22 mm -hmm. to 37, which mm -hmm. at the time was like, wow, cool. three-dimensional photographs. Very cool. Yeah, very cool. But in the director's cut and the final cut as well, there's a scene that was, that was um, deleted. And the scene that was deleted, or I'm sorry, a scene that was added. And in the scene that's added, he's, he's, he's doing that and there's a fade. And there's a scene of a unicorn running and the unicorn and it's kind of misty. And then it comes out and, and, and that, and actually that scene I find, we find out, I found out later is actually from legend. I, I was yeah. just going to say, it sounds just like a scene from legend. And I think Ridley Scott either was started legend and it got interrupted and then he had to go back to it or something like that. There's, so it's, it's, if, you know, with that scene added, then yeah. he is a replicant because Gaff leaves the origami. How would he know about, uh, about uh, unicorns? Why would he, he say, you know, yeah, why would he do it? No that's way too specific, right? Right. right. Yeah. So that, that's a very clear but subtle link. That's what I thought. So, yeah. so that's the idea there. Now, it's, it's my understanding that Ridley Scott and, and, and Harrison Ford as, you know, disagreed on this point. Um, Ridley Scott says that he always thought that Rick Deckard was replicant. Ridley, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Harrison Ford said, no, you know, I'm not a robot. I don't want to play a robot. I'm an actor. I want to play a human being, right? So, and so he was looking for the humanity and the character, you know, mm -hmm. even though the character, I mean, actually this portrayal is pretty wooden. Very. Uh, I, I, so that is one reaction that I recall having yeah. uh, the first time that I saw it yeah. is that he doesn't really have a lot to work with. He's really there simply to move the plot along um, primarily with Roy and Rachel, just so that they, they, he contrasts to what they're going through. Decker's not the, the most interesting character. No. You know? The not replicants really. are fascinating. You know, yes. That's what we're fascinated by. We're fascinated right. by these robots, they're sentient. And because they're sentient and they're starting to get emotions, they're, they're evolving almost, um, that they can only live for four years because otherwise they won't be able to handle emotion, human emotions. You, know? you give them memories to as a cushion to make them yeah. easier to handle. A pillow. You know, it's, yeah. it, it makes yeah. them easier to control, he says. Yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll branch off here.